So hi, Want the Good Noise Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with uh, Kitty. And John from St. Agnes. And we're asking some questions say about their upcoming album Bloodsuckers. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? Yeah, it's been great. Um, you know, we've we've been quiet for a little while. Um, coming out of COVID's just been such a weird time. Mm. Um and we actually had quite a busy COVID, like we released two EPs during that time. Um, and kind of exhaust ourselves a little bit. Um, but yeah, we've, we've faced like quite a few challenges coming out of it. Um, and then putting this album together, it's like, it's the hardest we've ever worked on, on music and it's the proudest we've ever felt about the result. Mm-hmm. And to put it out and see people really excited and always appreciating the fact that as a band, we're always moving forward. We're not, we, we never stay the same. Um, we haven't had one negative comment which just uh, it's almost like the internet's broken or something we haven't had the trolls <laughs> <at all. laughs> pretty weird well, that's good yeah the the album's awesome mm-hmm. album you. fucking rocks thank you, thank you. of course thank you. hell yeah uh, so is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art um yeah so the uh the title bloodsuckers is also the first track on uh, the record um and that song is just basically about um well, I have, when writing that song, I have like a specific person in mind. Um, and it's a person who like, or people who um, I think like try to crush you in life and diminish you and, and maybe don't like respect who you are. And um, yeah, so, and I think like most people have someone probably in their lives like that. Um, so bloodsuckers is, is a reference to that. Someone who's a bloodsucker who just kind of takes your like energy and, and like power away from you, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the title of the record as well. And with the artwork, um, we wanted it to be, because um, so basically we made the record, we started making it shortly after my mum passed away, mm-hmm. um, which was a really big shock, wasn't expected at all, it was very sudden. Um, so I was basically in a very like, very low, very difficult place when we made the record. And we wanted the album artwork to reflect that, so I've kind of got like bruising and I'm bleeding. Um, but we also wanted, because because making the record was such a triumphant and kind of also joy-filled thing for us, we wanted it to look kind of as if I was ascending to heaven. It's about overcoming, it's about being triumphant yeah. over adversity. Yeah, so we wanted um, like a kind of, oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like, like, victorious. Yeah, kind of, victorious, mm, that's it. Like yeah. Kind of Roman, like, yeah. ascension. Mm. Yeah, the artist so. that we worked with, we, we said to him, we kind of want to kind of, Kitty to look like she's won at the first ever Olympics, you know, like the a kind of antiquated Olympics, but yeah. covered in bruises and stuff. And, and he did an amazing job. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's a fucking awesome concept. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for this album? Mm-hmm. Uh, so the writing process was a couple of the songs started quite a long time ago. We had the seeds of ideas for Bloodsuckers and Animal um and at war with myself like mm. coming up to the end of kind of the year before um that they we hadn't formed them into proper songs they were just things that were kind of we'd roughly demoed but we were too busy with touring too busy with everything else we we're doing to like really get into it but we really felt that there was something in them that was representing the direction we wanted to take the sound and it was really nice that we had that kind of time to reflect on it do a tour in between it and come back and listen to them and go, we like them, but we just want to take it further. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we really, really wanted to make the sound of the record uncompromising and as St. Agnesy as possible. We didn't want to, we didn't want to look at other bands and think, oh, you know, everyone's doing this kind of thing right now. Everyone's got huge choruses with like a choral element or something like that. We just like. We just want to please ourselves and because of the adversity that Kitty had faced on a personal level that, you know, amongst other things with coming out of COVID as well on top of that and our bass player um, that had been with the band for a long time left the band the day that we signed our record deal. Damn. There was, it was just a really tumultuous, difficult period and Kitty and I and Andy, our drummer, um, just kind of really regrouped and got really, really close and dug into what we were doing and didn't really listen to any other music mm. or anything just like what do we want to hear what's the record that we want to hear that is best going to frame 
the lyrics that Katie's written and serve the purpose of trying to enhance the feel behind those songs because Kitty was in a kind of state if you don't mind me saying no, that like no. you you couldn't work for like you, you might not have like four days in a row that you could work you'd have four days where you're just kind of like mentally all over the place yeah. and then you'd be like right today I've written these lyrics last night let's let's do something with them right now so we were kind of writing and recording everything all at the same time in a really almost like fevered way yeah it was kind of when I felt able to do something it was like now like we have to go now because I feel like strong enough to do this basically mm -hmm. um which is an odd way to make a record mm -hmm. but I think all that emotion is really we can manage to capture it which I'm really proud of mm -hmm. absolutely yeah absolutely. It, it gives it like that organic feeling because you're not pushing anything out it's just like when you feel it it comes out um yeah but Am I correct in saying that it was the lyrics that came first and then you guys would write the instrumentals around it? Uh, no, it all kind of came together. There, there's often like small ideas. So maybe Kit will have a chorus lyric that she's like, I've got this idea that I want to do a song about this feeling. Mm -hmm. And I, I can tell when the moment's right, I'm going to flesh it out lyrically at the same time as her saying that cool guitar riff that you did a month ago we should that's the that, one yeah. that uh, that's the one that's got the right feeling we'd flesh that out um mm. and a lot of the songs you know because andy our drummer is he's, he's an amazing uh drummer and we're really proud of the fact that we don't i don't know how many people care about this at all but for us we we don't quantize the drums we don't fix anything like the drums are the drums we go in and we record them in a pretty old school way and andy does takes of the drums until we're oh, like right, yeah. that's a great take and that's the drum take and we don't fiddle with it Damn. so we have to the song has to be written in its structural form by that point but then once we then write everything else it can change form quite a lot at that point so we kind of bring it back to our studio and would work on it and we might just like chop those drums halfway through and have a instrumental section right in the middle of a song that we hadn't previously planned but we'll put right in the middle something like that and we it was all based on if it felt like it served the, the said, emotion oh, yeah, the emotion so. <laughs> okay. the music was kind of there to support always like the best the best way of like supporting the emotion that we we're trying to get across yeah okay that makes sense uh, so what song off this album took the longest to write and which one is each of your own personal favorite? I really love uh, War With Myself because um, I think it's very um, authentic. I was trying to describe what it felt like to have this like mental kind of um, episode, I guess is the best way to describe it. And it really, I think the, the lyrics and the music work together to really uh, demonstrate how it felt to me at the time to go through that um, which is probably the most kind of honest and vulnerable song I've ever written um, so that's probably I don't know if it's my favourite but it's probably the song I'm like most proud of I guess. It's, it's such an unusual song it doesn't fit a normal kind of verse chorus kind of verse chorus structure and it was it's really artistic you know Kitty said to me like I've got these lyrics and I want to do something that starts with almost like when 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 you have like a, a nervous anxious kind of episode you're just living your normal day and then there's just this tiny little kind mm. of flickering like static in your brain that lets you know something's coming and something mm. is going to get bad and mm. Kitty then that's what we did with the music we have this little annoying kind of guitar that's kind of like a little wasp in your brain and then by the end it's like a churning maelstrom of like craziness and then we wanted the refrain at the end, the um, same old shit, I'm so sick of myself, to just cut off because it implies that it just carries on. You just, you never really kind of get past this. So that, What's I think- What's your favorite? Uh, I'll talk, I'll go the other way. I'll talk about like one that took the longest, which was Outsider. Mm. Like we started writing Basically, yeah, we had the chorus for Outsider years ago, didn't we? Three it? years ago. And it's probably. taken that long of like working on it any time we were going to release something, we were like, oh, we've got that really cool, like, outside of chorus, we should do something with that. 
and just never could get it to work, could mm. we? But we knew, like, we should hold on to it because it's a really cool chorus. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, like, but we, we, had the, we had all the lyrics, everything. It was the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, yeah. It was just we could never find the right melody and music that served the purpose of the song. And suddenly we kind of hit on it. Um, really at the last minute it was one of the last things that went on the record mm. just because we suddenly kind of found a way um but yeah i th i think my i think my favorite track on the record is probably this is not the end just um because again it came together really quickly it came together really organically and i had very little input in um the painstaking process of writing that's kind of nearly all kitty and so mm. I get to hear it purely as a fan rather than remembering, oh, that guitar part was really hard to come up with. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I just heard it as a fan and was responding to it in real time. And that was written and recorded in a day. And the whole thing just, just, uh, we, it was, I had a piano part that I'd messed about with before that was mm -hmm. very rough. And Kitty, I can't play piano. And Kitty took it, turned it into something proper and had, lyrics that you really wanted to write about your mum and mm. and then by the end of the day there it was it was really good and it's a really moving song and I, I still kind of tear up every time I hear it still oh yeah all right um so how the track list for the album come about did you guys write the opener be the opener close it be closer just shuffle around and see what fits what was that process like I think Bloodsuckers was always going to open the records because mm -hmm. it's just like it's one of the heaviest songs on there and it's just so like in your face and like the fuck you kind of attitude is just like so apparent in that song, which is a theme that's like across, across the whole record, like fuck everyone. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was always going to be the opener. Um, Everything else, we just made playlists and couldn't, I mean, you know. It's hard. It's, it's hard. really hard. We couldn't decide for a long time. and But suddenly we hit on a order that wasn't, it didn't seem natural actually. It was really different up until that point. You just have this idea that this is how roughly it should go when you're recording it. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of takes a little bit of a break to suddenly look at it and go, well, let's just shuffle it around totally other than Bloodsuckers. And we kind of hit on something. And once we put This Is Not The End at the end of side A to kind of break the record in two, rather than, you know, these days most people put anything that's kind of lower energy all just gets put to the end of the album. You know, it just mm -hmm. starts. Most albums just kind of do that. Um, but we didn't want to do that. We wanted to think about people listening to it on vinyl um, and for it to be like a story of, of two two sides. Um, and I'm really happy with how it's turned out. What's interesting to me is <clears throat> thinking, like listening to the record and thinking about this question and what your answer might have been. I thought that the answer would have been that the last song was going to be the one that was like the guaranteed bookend because it just makes sense listening to it. But it, it's weird that like that wasn't the one that you guys were like that. That's the closer. No, not really. I think no. I think follow you was going to be a closer for a yeah. while. Um, I think with that song we we reworked it to work better as a closer. Um, it stopped much more abruptly, and so we didn't have the kind of like long tail on the end that allows it to. Kind yeah, of drift it was away. once we'd had the idea. Oh, let's like make that the closer that we then thought how can we make this like really interesting so i guess it does mm -hmm. like that makes sense yeah it does make sense think that, that was the closer because it kind of was like designed i guess to be that way yeah okay yeah. that makes sense you, you go through loads yeah. of phases you're like maybe we should open the album with like a 10 the, minutes yeah you have lots through. of ideas and then your team like your manager and your label tell you mm, no, like that's probably not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> and then you tell them, well, I don't care, that's what we're doing anyway. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's what any any time what we end up doing lines up with what our manager suggests. We change it because yeah. we're like, it's not the right idea. Yeah. He's into it. Yeah, it's not the right idea. Like, <laughs> you're wrong. It's very hilarious. That's awesome. Uh so would you guys be able to tell us where your headspace is at while we were creating this record? Um <laughs> very bleak. Because um, as I said, obviously my mum had passed away mm. and um, I've always made music and made art and I've, I've always made art that's, that's personal, like whatever's going on in my life, that's what comes out in the art and I think lots of people like that. Um, I think it's a way of like taking something that's happened to you and getting to like look at it as a tangible, like almost physical thing and, and therefore better 
understand it and work through it and things like that. And this record was that. I mean, like, couldn't couldn't have been more that thing of just like working through all of the emotions and really opening myself up to grief um, and 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 putting myself in a very like vulnerable raw place. Which at the time, both of us were like the moments where we're like, should we be doing this? Like, you know, is this too difficult for too me? Much like, pressure. too much pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually, like looking back. Um, we started in 2021, didn't we? Recording, um, making it. It was just the best thing I could have done, really, um, and feel so much better for having done it. Um, yeah. So it was like it was weird because I would be like, obviously, like really low, like devastated, grieving. Um, there'd also be like quite euphoric highs because I think when you're going through something like that, you feel the extremes of emotion, so you can yeah. feel like. Once you felt that low, you can you're that you then have access to feeling like weirdly high, like euphorically high. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of like a roll, the whole process was a roller coaster, really. Um, but I, I do think it was like really the best thing. It was healthy. Yeah, it, it was, was healthy. From, from my point of view, it's very intense to be around because mm. normally when someone's feeling extreme emotion, at normal people in in, in normal day to life, you do something to kind of like rein it in a little bit when you're with other people. You know, you might feel it inside or you might feel it privately. Or if you're specifically talking about it, you might let it out. But when you're working and stuff, you kind of like mm. pull it back. But Kitty's job was to kind of do the exact opposite and absolutely let it out. And we had a kind of agreement between us that that's what, what Kitty was like. That's what I want to do. So help me facilitate that. Don't be afraid of like pushing it even if it gets kind of scary and it was like you know seeing someone that you really care about in a really vulnerable state and being like I think you could sing that better let's go for another take Mm. and like the song Animal like I mean I remember that one specifically because Kay was absolutely like just you did a take and you're like I think that's fucking great I'm really happy and I was like I think you can do better Mm. And he was just, I mean, you were so pissed off. You were in such a, having such a difficult time and you were just raging. And by the end of that song, I could hear your like voice like shredding. Mm. And I knew that you were like, I'm not going to be able to sing tomorrow because of this, which it's like, it's just so stressful. And then I heard the microphone like hit the wall and then turn around and get us on the floor in tears. But the take was fucking incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but we had had this agreement that this is where we were going to go with it. But mm-hmm. you do feel guilty in that moment going, am I involved in something that's pushing someone too far? But the yeah. next day, this and back. And he was like, I feel good because I've overcome that. That That's now out of me and exists mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. rather than in here. And so that's good. But in the moment, it's a, I mean, you just don't, when you're in bands, you just don't spend that much time normally around that level of like really real emotion. A singer might have written a song at home four months ago with some words that mean something to them, and then they have to try and remember how they feel when they sing it. But Kitty mm-hmm. wrote it there and then and sang it and just fucking went crazy. And to be there right in the eye of the storm is an intense place for, as a bystander, let alone the person who's actually doing it. That's fucking, that's wild. Yeah. It was wild, yeah. <laughs> it was wild. You can hear it, you can hear it on the recording, the microphone hitting the wall at the end. I don't, I don't remember lots of the recording process or any of that time, really. And I think it's quite a common thing if you lose someone's grief. You just, your memory, I don't really remember a lot of that year. It's just like, you know, it's not there, it's not in my brain. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, crazy, crazy time. Crazy time. Yeah. Um, so how do you recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time? <clears throat> Should they do it in the car with friends and dark with headphones on? Is a workout album, party album? What do you guys personally recommend? Should definitely be played like obnoxiously loud. Mm. That's the first thing. Mm. Um, I think that I, I love listening to music on my own in the car. That's yeah. like there's something about moving, whether it's in with headphones when we're on tour in the back of the van or just on my own driving. There's something about it. So, that would be my recommendation. Um, it's just the best way to take it in. But if you're, it's definitely not a party album. You know, it's not a good, we're not here to have like a good time. Um, you could definitely rock out to it if you ignore like what's happening lyrically. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's pretty ferocious. It's intense, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Uh, so this one should be super, super quick off the top of your heads. I want you guys to describe this album for new listeners in three words. Three words each, no more, no less. Oh, um, so intense, definitely. Mm. Uh, honest, very honest. Um, and just, yeah, ferocious. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, uh, I'm going to go for a very short sentence of truly authentic art. Let's go. All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so in that same train of thought, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want listeners to have while going through the album? I hope, I just hope that like people who need it, find it really. Um, Cause I think like all music fans, music and, and live gigs really like are healing things in life. Um, anyone who loves music, you know, there'll be a record or a gig they've been to where you come away from it or you finish listening to it and you feel somewhat healed um, and I just hope that people you know can get that from it somebody needs it lots of people go through traumatic grief you know everybody loses people in their life and I just hope that um, it can connect with those people in some way because that's like why we do this really it's like one is is because it's really important for John and I to get what's inside out that's really important to us the other thing is like searching for connection with people um, is another huge reason why we do this. So I just hope, I just hope yeah, people can yeah, get I something from it. Feel, feel excited saying I hope people find find something in there. Like the band Nine Inch Nails was a huge inspiration for this record, and I know that when I listen to like the Downward Spiral by Nine Inch Nails it's a really angry album but i feel elevated and empowered by it and feel like by the end of it like you can overcome something and i hope people feel the same verse it's not about it's not just bleak and crushing you there's something in there that empowers you and gives you a togetherness and a belief mm. that like other people are in the same position and there's some strength in that all right absolutely sure uh, so, are you guys able to talk about any particularly challenging or standout moments from the creation of this album, positive or negative? I think the song I Mean Nothing to You, that was a really interesting mm. song because it was it was kind of weirdly simple and positive to come together. We, we, because our bass player left the band really close to us starting to actually record and the first thing we have to go and do is like track the drums. We had these days booked to go and track the drums. You know, we don't have some massive budget. We're going in there and we're like working Andy hard and just charging through this stuff. Yeah. And we didn't have, we were originally we were just going to do 10 songs and we didn't really have a 10th song that we were totally settled on when we were going in. Mm. And really when we got there and we were setting up the drums, Kitty was playing bass and I was playing guitar just to do guide tracks because that's the other thing on the record is that we didn't have a bass player so Kitty and I played all the bass on it um but yeah we were just jamming a riff and it just came together while we while the engineer was setting up all the mics we kind of like ended up with the structure of something mm. that felt like this is really cool and I that's had not, to... that's not usually how we write songs like we don't go into rehearsal as a band and write songs it's just mm. I'd say like John and I kind of see see ourselves or work more in a way like a producer would work where we have like concepts and ideas and you know we write a lot of it you know like at, in a studio on our own don't we mm-hmm. like you know on the computer essentially like writing yeah. music and um, we don't usually really do that organic as a band writing a song together so that was you're right it was really cool like it was really cool. I'm looking forward to doing that more more yeah forward. it was a surprise at each point that one coming like. We did the rest, we did a rough version of it there and then, and we haven't really changed it. Mm. Um, and I had a rough idea for a melody and then the lyric kind of like the main kind of hook sort of came to me and then Kitty fleshed out. I told her what I felt the song was about and Kitty fleshed out the rest of it. And it just kind of was there and it felt like none of us had really done it. Everything else always feels like we're kind of in the trenches and working really hard. Um, and this one, it was like suddenly seeing this thing finish. And it was like, well, who did this? Because I don't feel like I did this. And he was like, I don't feel like I did this. And Andy would be like, well, I don't feel like I did it. But yeah. somehow, maybe this is what other bands experience, collaboration. <laughs> and knowing they have it all the time. But it's not something we're used to. And that yeah. was a really cool. positive standout moment. Oh, yeah. That's fucking um, awesome. 
So for this question, I want you to picture you're on tour. You're at a gas station for a rest stop. You're going in. What's your snack of choice? I'm like a massive chocolate <laughs> addict. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's always going to be something chocolate based, but I'm, I try to wean myself off it. Um, and I might, I might tell myself that I'm doing the right thing and have um, some dried mango these days. That's Whoa, the, really? Ooh, Very good. Dried mango. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I discovered that it's basically Sugar. as sugary as chocolate and I might as well just eat chocolate anyway. But, oh. <laughs> but it's, it's, like, it's the illusion of being healthier, so that's what matters. It's also yeah. natural sugars, so, it's, you know, yeah. like, it's just, it's exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm, I like, because I'm like saying I have to be really health conscious on tour. Um, it's really unfair, actually. Like, everyone else can just do whatever they want, but when you're the, the main singer, you just, you just can't because um, you have to look after your voice. So, mm -hmm. for me, like, also, I'm really like into good food. So I struggle a lot on tour, really, with like uh, service station. Saying so, that when we're in Italy, what? When we're in Italy, you just couldn't get like the service stations in Italy are like gourmet, really. You know, the yeah, food exactly. Is like and it's totally different. every single stop. I mean, we'd drive like fifteen miles, and she'd be like, "I want to stop again and get like <laughs> another big plate of like proper food." And you're just like, "I can't get enough in." You're eating these like gourmet sort of chicken sandwich things mm -hmm. like non-stop it was like a oh joke. yeah if the food's good then i'd stop at every service station oh, but yeah. we, live in, we live in england so yeah it's not good yeah um, and don't get started on germany the snacks to yeah. everything well no, that's bad okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, so on the topic of food if the band was a dish what dish would the band be and why <laughs> good question, good question. Uh, I think it just have to be curry, just because of our true love of curry. Me, Kit, and Andy will any opportunity will talk any ourselves yeah, into. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if we just like? Why don't we go and have a curry? You know, like any time. Um, curry in England, like, is you know, it's, there's a lot of it, and it's really, really good. Um, and so, yeah, I think that we're fueled on curry, and therefore that. Suits is just about right. It's fire intense. It's fire intense. There's a whole mixture of different things. You know, yeah, it's, it's good. enjoyed worldwide. It's a good uh, analogy. All right, sounds good. Okay, yeah. um, so, for the last couple of questions, we're going to shift completely away from music and go straight to death row. Boom. So, if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? I mean, literally, it would be curry and a beer. Like, <laughs> it would be my favorite. Like, there's a particular place. Um, in London that we really like called the Tale of India. And it'll be a classic order from the Tale of India with a English ale, like a proper mm. dark beer. That's a great, um, to be honest, mine would be exactly the same as that. And I would have it with you. Oh. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, so if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? That's a really good question. We're both like quite big sci-fi nerds, so that's like, oh, that's a hard question. I'd I'd live in the like, I'd I'd live in the Back to the Future sort of film. I think mm -hmm. um, it's such an influential film for me. It was the thing that made me want to play guitar, and it's just yeah, something awesome. about. It's every time I watch that film, when they're in the eighties, I love it. When they're in the fifties, I love it. The whole thing just feels so nice like it feels wholesome, wholesome. and good mm -hmm. but like with loads of, in, of ad, loads of adventure happening you know it's adventure but kind of with a few safety pads on mm -hmm. so there's no true kind of peril first exactly. thing i thought of when you said that was the matrix and i thought but we're in it so check um so i've done the last question every single person that we've spoken to have said that it is the most important question What's your favorite color? Oh man! It's, I mean, it's black, it's right? It's black, yeah, obviously. Yeah, it's Say no more. yeah. It's, black. it's the go-to for everything. <laughs> it's just an assumption, right? That clothes will be black, and when you're doing artwork, it's just an assumption that everything will be based off black. Look better. Yeah. yeah. I remember when I I did therapy, and I was one of the first things the therapist said to me. She was like, <laughs> she was like, every time you come in here, you're wearing black. Like, is that normal? Because um, apparently it's like a sign of if you're, if you're depressed, if you have depression, people stop wearing colours. 
And I was like, no, like, oh, I am depressed, but I don't wear black because of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a massive god. So, like, don't, don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so as I said, that's all the questions you have today. Is there anything that you guys would like to plug? Um, obviously, the record's coming out in July. Uh, we're off on tour uh, on Sunday in Europe. Which doesn't really it months to make now. Yeah. And then we're doing a UK tour at the end of the year. Um the main thing we've got another single coming out soon. This yeah. is not the end, the song I said about this kind of like the my favourite one on the record. It's the it's the very emotional, intense and quite quiet song. And we've filmed a we went to Rockfield Studio in Wales, which is where Bohemian Rhapsody was recorded and stuff like that. Oh shit. And we so there's the album version which is coming out as a single, but a, a few days after that, we'll release a video this of this live performance that we went and filmed with Kitty playing the grand piano, the Bohemian Rhapsody piano, mm. I believe. Um, and yeah, it's it's great. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, how people respond to that. The same band that just released like Bloodsuckers and Animal doing this song. I'm interested to see if people, because to us it's an obvious link because the emotional intensity, but hopefully people people see that oh yeah <clears throat> all right well thank you for sound this guy has been john and kitty from saint agnes and we have been the good noise podcast